Hey, what's up YouTube? Scott, Scotty Tradition, uh, back with a one package mail day video. And I'm um, also going to talk about um, kind of an update on where I'm at with all of my PSA registry sets right now. Um, I've got a couple different sets going, so just kind of want to give a one overall update of how everything's going. Um, hope all of you guys had fun at the National. Um, for those of you who actually went to the National, um, I had a family uh, cabin weekend planned, so I did not go to the National. Um, so I hope you enjoyed the pictures um, that started the video. I um, was gone for about five days. Um, that was actually uh, my son's first time, my oldest son's first time, uh, kind of going fishing with uh, me and my father-in-law. And um, caught a couple big fish, a um, couple nice largemouth bass. Um, that From the picture you can see a nice northern that we caught. And uh, we ended up throwing that one back, um, but it was a lot of fun catching it. So, and yeah, back home now. Came home to a one package mail day. So we'll go ahead and show that to you now. A uh, 1982 Tops Lawrence Taylor rookie card. Um, I am a sucker for the defensive players, so Lawrence Taylor fits that bill. Um, this card actually goes to three of my sets. Goes to the NFL Hall of Fame set. Goes to the Top 100 NFL Player set. And also to the top 250 in the hobby set, which is the main set that I'm working on at this point. Um, very nice looking card right there. Um, when this card came in, there was actually a like a glue sticky kind of residue right here, and on the back there was also like a a sticker was put on there, and it was kind of you know grimy and crusty looking. So what I ended up doing, and this is I've done this a couple times now, and it works really well. Um, if you ever have a slab that comes with something sticky on it, like there's a sticker put on it, and it has that residue, um, a good way to get that off is just to grab a Q-tip and um, some like isopropyl alcohol, rubbing alcohol, and you just uh, dab, a little, dab the Q-tip in there, and then you just rub. Um, if there's a lot of grime on there, it can take a couple minutes, but if it's just a little grime, it usually comes off right away. So, and this card looks perfect now that I've uh, done that rubbing alcohol to that sticky area. So, um, this card is actually the 25th card of that two, top 250 in the hobby set. So, I am finally 10% complete with that set. And, um, pretty cool because a lot of those cards in there are a little pricey. And I'm sure it's going to get pricier as it goes. Um, this is not... A super high price card in the grade of a nine. I think I picked it up for about seventy-five or eighty bucks. I want to say um, that's pretty typical for what these go for. So happy to add that one to the set. So we'll put LT back there, and we'll go through the uh, PSA set registry update. Um, so basically, I'd say there's four sets that I'm working on right now, and then there's some other sets that that I'm just kind of filling. Um, kind of through osmosis, if you will, just because I'm working on the main sets. Um, so, first I'll go through my completed sets that I have on the registry. Um, so, number one is the uh, Jerry Kramer Basic Set. Of course, Jerry Kramer just got inducted into the NFL Hall of Fame. And that card is a very small set, only three cards. Um, and I am number one overall in that set with a uh, set rating of 10.25. Um, you get bonus points if you have the top pop card, and it's, especially if it's pop one. Um, and I've been number one on that set for 2017 and 2018. And there are eight other people doing that set, so pretty happy about that. And um, the second set that I've completed is the all-time Green Bay Packers set. Um, there is 31 total cards in that set. So these are players that are in the NFL Hall of Fame and played for the Packers, or that are were very good players that played for the Packers that are not quite in the Hall of Fame. Kind of, they'd be in the Hall of Very Good, if you will. Um, and I'm number two overall in that set. Um, and that is out of 31 people doing the set, so I'm um, pretty proud of that. That's some. These are some of the first sets that I started working on. Um, my overall set uh, rating for that is 8.88. Um, and then there was one guy ahead of me, his name is Ryan, um, who I know uh, as an acquaintance, and... He's actually hooked me up with a couple cards, so very nice guy. But uh, he has some cards that I will just never be able to catch him, um, which is fine. <laughs> but his set rating is 9.54, which is pretty crazy. 
Um, and then the third set that I completed is the Team Hall of Fame Packers set. So that's all players in the Packers Team Hall of Fame. Usually they induct one or two players each year into that. And that set currently is at about 100 total players, so 100 different cards. And I have completed it. Um, there's actually a couple cards that I need to add from this last year yet. Um, so it'll be probably around 102 shortly. Um, and that's out of 21 people doing the set. I think I am number two in that set overall. My set rating for that's 8.98. And of course, uh, Ryan is ahead of me. 9.57 is his set rating. So again, I'm not going to catch him, and I'm fine with that, right where I'm at. Um, and then the last set I've completed is the Pro Football Hall of Fame Packers set. So these are just Packers in the NFL Hall of Fame. Um, I have number three overall in that set out of 28 people. And um, that is an 18-card total set. Uh, my set rating for that is 9.06. Um, the number one guy in, in that set is Hunt Casterline. And he has a set rating of 9.94. And if you're familiar with Hunt Casterline, um, that is the uh, tandem of Hunt and Casterline who put together this crazy NFL Hall of Fame high-grade set. So I imagine Hunt Casterline is going to be leading pretty much any of the Pro Football Hall of Fame team sets. <laughs> just because um, basically they had unlimited funds and then they just bought up all the high-end cards they could find. And... Yeah, he's going to be number one. That's the set that's displayed at the Pro Football Hall of Fame in Canton. And plus, they have lots of other cards on backup. I think they even started a second set. Um, and then my other my uh, guy that I know, Ryan, he is at 9.75 rating. He's number two in that set. So I'm number three, and I'm probably not going to be moving from there anytime soon. That's also fine. Um, and then there's some other sets that I'm working on. I am working on the all-time Brewers and all-time Milwaukee Bucks set, um, just as like a... Uh, sort of like a side projects. They're nothing. They're nothing that I'm actively looking to fill in those sets, unless I find like a crazy good deal. So uh, I, I'm working on them, but I'm not working on them, if you will. Um, the only other set that I'm kind of working on is that top 250 in the hobby set. So that's where the Lawrence Taylor went. And uh, with that set, I am let's see here, number 45. Uh, currently ranked number 45 out of 86 people doing the set. So. And I'm only at 10%, so, and I'm still ranked in the upper, almost the upper half. <laughs> so it just shows you that not a lot of people um, get a lot of high percentages in completing that set, but it's still fun to work on, and it's a good way to diversify your collection. Um, a couple other guys that I know that are working on the set um, is uh, Ray from Philly. I think he's number 48 overall in that set. And then Mike, Baseball Card Collector, also is number 40 in that set overall so he's just ahead of me um i think a lot of those guys have crossover cards you know from their baseball hall of fame sets that are actually just crossing over in that top 250 set by default so i'm at, and i'm actually working on that set so i'm going to be getting a lot of different sports and different cards as we go um so yeah that's where I'm, that's where i'm at with all my sets right now so um it's going to be kind of a little bit of a slower go here um with my with my set building um, basically because as far as the Packer sets go, um, any upgrade I make is going to be incredibly expensive. So, you know, there's that part, if you look on the, P if you're familiar with the PSA registry, there's an area where you can click edit and then it'll show you cards that could possibly upgrade your set. Well, I barely ever have any cards that can upgrade my sets, uh, as far as those go. And in fact, I think last time I checked, there was only two cards that I could upgrade out of the 100 that are in there. And the one was like a Tony Canadale rookie card in PSA 9, and I think I have an 8.5. And so that only be, would be a half grade upgrade, but it would cost me like, that card is priced at like five to $6,000. So it just doesn't pay to upgrade that card. And then I think the other upgrade was a Don Hudson in PSA 9 rookie card. I have an 8. Um, so an 8 goes for around 1000 or a little more. Uh, PSA 9 goes for like, you know, in that five to six thousand dollar range again, so it's just not feasible to upgrade one grade and spend four thousand. That's not where I'm at right now. So, um, and as far as the top two fifty set goes, um, again, I'm just going to kind of continue working on that one in like that mid to, mid to high grade set, higher grade if it's a newer card, kind of like mid upper grade if it's a card from the fifties, sixties, or seventies like cards in the grade of a six, five, seven, something like that. 
So that's all I got for you guys. Um, just that one uh, LT rookie card, which is a cool pickup for the, a couple of my sets. And that is all. Thanks for watching, guys. You guys all have a great day.